Welcome to MJ Hobby Corner, guys. Uh, this today's Monday, and I think it's gonna be a regular thing on Mondays. I will be uh, putting up a sculpture video, and whether it's to show a new armature that I'll be working on or uh, a new piece that I'll be working on, I think it's gonna be uh, kind of a regular thing on Monday. Okay, and this uh, Griffin clay mixes. I use green stuff. Super Sculpey and also Epoxy Sculpt which is another kind of resin clay. It has a hardener and a resin component very much like green stuff. Uh, usually I work on a 2 to 1 ratio so basically if I cut a little clump of green stuff uh, that's going to be my 2 and then I take a much smaller clump like half of that and that's what I call 2 to 1. Uh, sometimes I'll do one-to-one -one ratio. I try to get the clumps of each of the clay uh, about the same size, mix them together, and I get this nice light green mix. Now, I'm you. this is three different clays here mixed up. Now, why do I mix it? Uh, clay mixes have been very, very important for me uh, as I learned to sculpture. Um, I've been experimenting with a lot of different mixes, and this trio that I'm using now has worked the best for me. It allows the green stuff to be less gummy, still sticky enough that it'll stick to the armature, but less gummy so I can mix it better and kind of spread it better. Uh, pure green stuff is way too gummy for some of the things that I need the clay to do on the armature. However, as I get down to the limbs, I do start using more and more pure green stuff because uh, pure green stuff sticks better to these wires. And I have to file these wires to make them rough so the green stuff can stick to it. So that's what I do. As I'm sculpting, I'm mixing the clay differently. Sometimes I use it more pure. Other times I don't. It really, really helps to change the properties of the clay. Uh, so that's one of my one of the little secrets I learned of, of sculpting a long time ago is clay mixes. All right, so uh, and here's the big fish that I made recently. Those of you guys that have been following the deep sea uh, sculpting project, and I still have some things to do on this, and then it's ready to go. Um, but that's it. Now tools, tools, my fingers, of course. Your hands are the best tools for sculpting. I use some water. I have a little caps there filled with water so I could dip the tools in the fingers. Still work with water, even with clay mixes. And these are all the tools. My, um, I have this tool here, which is good, especially good for the underarm to get um, the clay in there. Okay. And I use this pointy end here, uh, this sort of diamond tip, to begin my feathers. I squeeze it in there. And then I do, let's say, one side. The other side, I do it the opposite way. And so that's how I begin my, my diamond-like feather pattern. And then uh, my paddle tool, which is very important for smoothening, also for indentations. And then I go in with the paddle tool and very carefully make my diamond shapes like so. Diamond or triangular Right? And sometimes I squeeze in hard, and other times it's very gently, very slowly. Uh, so those are some of the tools. And then my soft tool for smoothening as well. And my exacto knife. And this is for much finer carving and detailing of fur areas. Okay, so uh, this is also important. And it's rather old, old now. So... All right, and that was it. That was my tools and my clay. I will be adding more deep sea sculptures uh, in the future. But for now, I'm going to be moving on to uh, part two, which is uh, the terrain, all the deep sea terrain, right? But before I do that, I, I wanted to do something a little different, uh, bring something a little different to the channel. I'm kind of taking a break from uh, deep sea sculpting for a little bit. Um, before I do all the terrain and stuff and uh, I started this uh, creature now this is gonna be a 
griffin like creature uh what i'm gonna do is uh, finish this up here's the armature right and it's about halfway done i, I work in um pieces so i usually work the figure until i'm satisfied with it but i don't do it all at once i kind of do it let's say halfway or or a quarter of the way depending how complex it is and then i let it dry and that really helps uh, i can always go back to it and add to it um green stuff and and green stuff mixes will stick to it each other you know even when dry so so basically, the plan is to have um, here probably lion-like limbs or, you know, something like that, some cat-like limbs. And then the rear will be the bird uh, limbs with the talons. And then, of course, they'll have a nice big fuzzy tail. And then the bird head, the eagle head here. And then you can see I started working on some of the feathers right here along the neck okay uh you can see that here and they're more like diamond shaped and then as you get down into the sculpture into the body you start to see more like uh fur you know tick marks like fur so and that's exactly what i did to differentiate the two um i did more tick marks along the body right and usually when i do my fur um depending on the kind of fur I usually I like to use this paddle tool and I will press it in and then kind of switch my angles do like a little triangle right and then I do it again and and again and I kind of do this all throughout the body and it produces some nice patterns right that I could later when I paint um, I could paint the body differently the fur areas differently from the feathered areas because this thing does have feathers so uh, the idea is this will probably go into one of julie's nature armies um so uh we'll see right um we might use it in oath mark we use it like as a, a hound instead of a hound it'll be like a pair of griffins and the elf in the middle right uh this kind of sculpture will serve very well as a mount in the future I do plan on making some mounts for some um, rider figures that I have. Okay. So also uh, for the fur, the way I do the fur in, in many areas, you see like that the fur kind of parts. Let me see if I can get it. You see how it kind of parts and forms these little waves of fur. That's because I gently pull on the paddle tool. Uh, in order to get those uh, patterns and it makes some pretty cool patterns usually along the edges like here along the edges of my breast here of the animal's breast I kind of pull a little bit and then I go on the other side and I pull opposite right the opposite side and that creates this kind of little shelf here like this little um, pattern of fur and it, it to me, it simulates, you know, areas of muscle maybe underneath that are causing the fur to part, um, you know, things like that. So uh, that's just a little bit about the technique that I'm using. And usually when I go uh, along a, mid a midline of fur, I usually part it in opposite ways. Like so I have a central line, you know, where the backbone is, and then I kind of part everything. I go at an angle to the line and that kind of simulates the parting of fur. So fur and feather. For some of these areas, once this dries, I can add some more feathers and kind of overlap them to make them look more like uh, feathers, right? But for the time being, uh, this is it. I'm going to let this dry now. And by the time you see this again, uh, it'll pro it would have progressed uh, quite nicely, I think. Here's uh, an example of one of those fur patterns I was talking about. You can kind of see it there. Uh, I pull very gently and then go on the opposite side and kind of pull on the opposite side. 
And one thing I've been doing lately, uh, as I'm looking at the camera in the phone as I'm filming this, I see a lot of the areas that need more work. So another trick that I do, another thing that I do, is that I actually look through my phone camera and it acts as a magnifying glass, you know. So uh, really does help. All right, so this is going to be a griffin. Uh, there will be wings, but they're going to be folded. It's not going to have the big, big, elaborate wings. I'm going to add, add, when this uh, dries, when I'm ready to sculpt again, I'm going to add the uh, mount here for the wings. And the wings are going to be folded. Okay, so this way, if I fit it into a uh, regiment tray or whatever, you know, uh, he's not going to have like these massive wings getting in the way. Uh, what I will do, however, in the future, is I will probably make a flying griffin with the nice big wings and put him on a flight stand, maybe have him holding a stone, like he's going to drop a stone. So I, I may do something like that in the future. I have a lot of sculptures planned. A lot of different things are uh, going to go on on the sculpting bench. So thank you, folks. Uh, if you're interested in this process, I will continue to show it. And uh, tomorrow, hopefully, you'll see this a little more complete. And that's it. And then we'll continue moving from there. I have a lot of work to do today on Monday. So um, I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to stop sculpting. This was about two hours of work. Two, two and a half hours of work. So a little over two hours of work. So, all right. Thank you very much.